that emotions between people are very wonderful. Some people have known each other all their lives, but still seem like strangers. Some people, as soon as they meet, they seem to be friends for years. Eleanor, 22, and Reggie, 12, belong to the latter category. Their relationship started out as a simple employment relationship. Eleanor was Reggie's babysitter. If Reggie's mother had needed a babysitter so badly, Eleanor wouldn't have been there. She doesn't even have babysitting experience. But that's not a problem either, because Eleanor's babysitting job is simple. She only needs to take Reggie to and from school. At 12 years old, Reggie doesn't really need much care. He's a gifted young boy with a high IQ and emotional intelligence. He learned it to read when he was 18 months old. Today, at age 12, he not only reads books, teaches himself math, but also composes his own music. Eleanor first met Reggie in the boys' music class. Eleanor couldn't help but be captivated by Reggie's music. She watched the boy on stage with his eyes closed, his expression as serene as an angel. Her heart resonated with the sound of the music. Eleanor couldn't help but be fascinated. She thought Reggie was just an ordinary boy. But Reggie's voice and his adult-like speech logic made it impossible for Eleanor to treat him like a child of his age. Eleanor wanted to pick Reggie up after the show, and they had a limousine and a driver to take him home. But Reggie insisted on walking, carrying a cello taller than his. Eleanor had no choice but to follow him. The two of them strolled through the sunlit park. Eleanor was surprised when she learned it, that Reggie had composed the piece herself. She genuinely complimented him on how good it sounded. Then she asked him curiously if the cello was what he wanted to do when he grew up. But Reggie gave a different answer from the common child. His answer was a bit pessimistic. With a young face, he was saying a lot of things that didn't match his age. This makes Eleanor feel a little funny, but also more curious about this little boy. Soon, Eleanor found out that this 12-year-old boy had a maturity and wisdom beyond his age. Eleanor was often surprised by Reggie's insights being his peers. When Eleanor wonders why the chef doesn't eat with them, Reggie reminds her that the cook likes to eat alone while watching her favorite show. She has her own little world. Reggie has a sense of boundaries, but also takes care of the needs and feelings of others. He will play the music in an empty swimming pool by himself. He will immediately fight back when a friend offends him and then apologize for his tone of voice. He will make a deal with the driver because he doesn't want to take the bus home. This way, the driver keeps his job, can support his sick daughter, and Reggie gets his wish. Reggie was also very independent, even if his particular personality was a bit of a headache. At the end of the semester, Reggie's mother has to leave for a while because of work. According to his mother's plan, Reggie was going to attend a six-week summer camp. Reggie made a private monetary deal with a camp director. This way he doesn't have to go to the boring youth friendship campaign, and the camp can earn money. He could also hide the fact that his mother didn't attend the camp. This man Eleanor would have to stay with him for the rest of days. But she didn't know how she was going to get through it. Eleanor was a bit frantic, but Reggie just smiled calmly. He said they would never run out of things to do in the bustling city of New York. Eleanor thought the situation was too absurd for a child. It's been said that everyone is an island. Many people spend their lives searching for a soul that fits them in a sea of people. But few people succeed and loneliness is more like a normal part of life. But Eleanor and Reggie have succeeded. The 22-year-old nanny and her 12-year-old employer have a soulful bond that transcends identity and age. The reason they are so compatible is that they share the same lonely traits. Reggie's maturity and wisdom beyond his years did not bring him joy. He is often lonely. His mother would rather spend her free time drinking and watching variety shows than communicating with her son. In a stereotypical and dull home, he can only talk calmly with his elderly cook. His only friends at school is a young boy who is obsessed with seeking attention from the opposite sex. He doesn't feed in with his peers or with the adults. Like an island, Eleanor is also lonely. Unlike Reggie's humor and decency, Eleanor's life is not easy. She was fired from her job at a restaurant after a fight with her boyfriend. She turned to her mother for help but was rejected. She can't even find a place to live. If Reggie's family is rich but indifferent, Eleanor's family is poor and distant. As they spend more time together, Reggie wonders about Eleanor's past. At the end of Reggie's cello performance ceremony, Eleanor and Reggie went to have ice cream together to celebrate. She learned it that Reggie had decided to give up playing the cello. Eleanor was puzzled, but she knew the boy's personality well. She didn't say much. Reggie then asked about Eleanor's family for the first time. Eleanor chose to remain silent in the face of this question. Her complicated family situation made her unable to say anything. She didn't want to show her embarrassment in front of the boy either. But Eleanor's ringing cell phone 
seems to remind him that a bad past is not easy to forget. Then her ex-boyfriend comes to her door. Compared to Reggie's maturity and stability, the man in front of her seems childish. He rightfully asks to get back together with Eleanor. This lame, womanizing man is more like an uneducated baby than a rude one. He swore and cursed when Eleanor refused his request. Reggie, who saw the two arguing, suggested to Eleanor that he could ask his driver, who had been in the army, to help him with his ex-boyfriend's pestering. But Eleanor just wanted to question her life. She says to herself that this is a huge mistake. At this moment, the two equally lonely people are like two islands floating together reading each other's frequencies in a very short period of time. They are like two people who are perfectly matched. In this employment relationship, they are more like best friends who have been friends for years. On vacations when they have nothing to do, they eat popcorn and watch movies at home together and laugh together. When the substitute chef's food is unpalatable, Eleanor takes Reggie on a subway ride halfway across town to get some great Chinese food. When they didn't want to walk, they chatted aimlessly in an art gallery over paintings of naked women. The 12-year-old employer hugged his 22-year-old nanny tightly. It turns out that not all feelings have a specific name. There is a feeling in the world. It seems to be friendship but better than friendship. It is like love but cannot be named love. Eleanor and Reggie's encounter is an unexpected surprise in their long journey of life. They got along better and better in the short time they had together. But the happy times are always short. One day Eleanor receives the news that her father is seriously ill. She starts to pack her bags to go back to see him. But she also worries about leaving Reggie alone. Reggie looked at her, so he offered to go back with her. The driver took them to the station and after a long drive, the two arrived at Eleanor's hometown. Eleanor's family is even worse than Reggie thought. Eleanor's mother and her uncle fell in love when her father joined the army. After her mother divorced her father, she immediately married her uncle. Her only close brother is far away in Afghanistan, and her underage sister works in a bar. Complicated family relationships and indifferent affection exhausted Eleanor. After a near argument with her family, Eleanor takes Reggie to a hotel. During the night at the hotel, Eleanor tells Reggie about her past for the first time. She used to play music and got into music school for it, but she had given up her dream of playing music in a life of poverty. Not only could she not afford to go to college, but she was forced to sell her instruments to make ends meet. When the subject came to the embarrassment of those adults, Reggie thoughtfully said goodnight and did not continue to ask questions. But then Eleanor in the darkness suddenly asked the name of the song Reggie played when they first met. Reggie replied, like Sunday. The boy whispers in the darkness, his voice soft and firm. The next day, they arrive at the hospital, looking at his dying father in the hospital bed. Eleanor cried in the car. Reggie didn't say a word and stayed by his side. This gentle boy was protecting her in his own way. He understands that Eleanor's adult world is a mess that he cannot talk about. He will quietly accompany her to face the anger and helplessness when the breakdown comes. On the bus to New York, Reggie encourages Eleanor to revive her dream of music. The 12-year-old boy from a wealthy family does not understand the helplessness of adults who are afraid to talk about their dreams. And Eleanor couldn't bear to refuse his kind offer. She had to say that if he wouldn't give up his cello, then she wouldn't give up her music dream either. Reggie readily agreed that to made a pact. Neither of them realized that this brief encounter had activated something precious in each other's miserable lives. It wasn't long before Reggie's mother was coming home and Eleanor's temp career was coming to an end. Despite their reluctance, Reggie made breakfast for Eleanor herself when the day of departure came. When saying goodbye, Reggie told Eleanor that it was hard for him to believe that he'd only been with her for a few months. But it seemed like he'd known her all his life. The young man had not had time to reveal his inexpressible thoughts hidden in his heart. Eleanor couldn't help but be moved. She got down on her knees and gave Reggie a big hug and a soft kiss. She didn't know that when she turned around, the boy who was always mature and calm couldn't help but cry. After parting, Eleanor left New York and returned home. She was still working as a waitress. Reggie is still the same math genius who avoids crowds in summer camps and reads alone in her room. Everything still looks the same, but something has changed. Reggie had his cello back in an empty pool and Eleanor received a gift from Reggie after work one day. She opened the beautifully wrapped box. She frowned and her nose got a little sore. Inside the box was a sheet of music called Like Sunday, Like Rain, and a brand new instrument. At the end of the story, they play the same melody across distant cities. The cello solo that runs throughout the film blends into the unique sound of her instrument for a moment. An unknown strong emotion 
that brings tears to the eyes more than their mournful parting. Their lives seem to have some courage for their future and dreams because of this encounter. It is hard to say what kind of relationship Eleanor and Reggie have with each other. It is like friendship and love but it is closer than friendship and more penetrating than love. Some people say it is not unexpected to meet love and sex in one's life. What is unexpected is to meet a soulmate. Just a sentence, I understand you, to different life individuals have a deep connection. In a casual and hasty time, they have not yet formed a tacit understanding. They didn't even have the social conditions to become friends. They just met and were lucky enough to know each other. Their brief moment was as long as a lifetime.